This is the schematic I'm going to use to control the part cooling fan speed. I'm using a PIC 12F683 microcontroller from Microchip. It's a dual inline package with 8 pins. From the 3D printer we're going to get 24 volts coming in. I'm using a 7805 voltage regulator to bring it down to the 5 volts we need for the microcontroller. I'm going to use a potentiometer to manually set the fan speed. It's going to give a value between 0 volts and 5 volts that will go into the analog input port on the microcontroller. The microcontroller is going to output pulse width modulation into a transistor, in this case a TIP41, switching it on and off many times a second and this will control the speed of the fan. Pulse width modulation or PWM, you can look it up for a more technical explanation, but in simple terms it describes how over a period of time you can switch a signal on or off. The ratio between the on and off time is called duty cycle and its value describes the percentage of on time. If you have a 50% duty cycle, you'll have 0 volts half of the time and 5 volts the remainder of the time in that period. Like so. If you have a smaller percentage duty cycle, you'll have less time on. And if you have a larger duty cycle, you'll have more time on. And so, the output here will vary the duty cycle and speed up or slow down the fan as we need it. This won't be a very technical description of how to program a PIC microcontroller, there are plenty of videos out there that do a better job than I ever could. Also, some people might prefer to learn from examples, which is usually how I prefer to learn myself. Okay, so we're in MPLAB X and we're going to look at the files in this project. For my projects, I start by creating a config header, a main header and a main C file. For the config file, if you click on configuration bits, you can set all your microcontroller configuration bits then press generate code and copy paste it into your config header file. On the main header file you define your constants, for example your oscillator frequency. These are constants I use to select the analog channel for analog to digital conversion, ADC. Also, as I create new functions, this is where I declare them. This one is very important. It's the one that handles the interrupts. In this project, the timer 2 interrupt it's what will trigger the setting of the PWM value. This is our main C file. Here we include the header files. These functions are setting up all the necessary values for the microcontroller to do what I want it to do. You should get used to going over the datasheet and figuring out what all of these mean. I have included as many comments as possible, so it's easier to figure out but the datasheet is indispensable for working with these microcontrollers. After the program runs its initial setup routines, it will set the PWM output to its maximum value, which is the maximum value we're getting from the potentiometer. This is so we get 100% duty cycle for a short amount of time, so that the fan ramps up to the maximum speed before settling in in the set speed. If we don't do this and the potentiometer is at its lowest setting, about 40% duty cycle, you might not be able to get the fan started. We then go to an infinite loop where it keeps reading the analog input value, the potentiometer. In the timer to interrupt, we have a few intervals where, based on the value of the potentiometer, we set the value of the PWM. And that's it for the codes. To program peak microcontrollers, there are a few different options. This is my first programmer. It's a Chinese PICKIT2 clone and it came with a 3M zip socket which is pretty handy to program the, the microcontrollers. The better option though, if you can afford it, is uh, getting the PICKIT3 from Microchip. It's a way more advanced programmer and you can also do in-circuit debugging with more advanced microcontrollers. Once we're done with the code, we can build the project. Check if the build is successful. Connect the PIC to your programmer and press Make and Program Device. Check if it says Program Verify Complete. 
remove the pick and install it in your test jig. This will never work if you have your wires cut to length and running in straight angles all over your breadboard. It should be always long and messy. Now let's turn on the power supply. As you see, the potentiometer is at its minimum setting. Now that we turn it on, you'll see that the output is at the constant 5 volts for a while until it drops to around 40% duty cycle. As I turn the potentiometer, you can see that the duty cycle is going up to 100%. This is the underside of my one hall duplicator 4S. As you can see here is the circuit for the fan control. The potentiometer is here, installed in the front of the printer. This is the mighty board. You can see here, completely out of focus, the connector that powers the cooling fan. It will be labeled extra on the PCB. Pay attention to the correct polarity on the connector. When in doubt, power the printer like this and connect it to your computer and using Simplify 3D or other software, turn on the cooling fan there and measure on the connector with your multimeter. I used one of the standoffs for the bottom plate, which I don't use, to hold the PCB in place. Here with the potentiometer it looks quite messy, but as long as you don't allow the pins of the potentiometer to touch the insulation of the ribbon cable for the front panel, it should be fine. Now all that's left is to connect it to a computer, turn on the fan and see if everything works properly. I created a small 3D model so I could print it at different cooling fan speeds and see what the difference it makes. I'm using ASA for this test. The whole point of this is to use slower speeds for filaments such as AVS, where a too high fan speed can lead to poor layer adhesion, but no fan also usually means melted small details. With the fan off, we can see that all the edges are a bit rounded and, uh, and the surface is not as nice as it should be. In the second test, we can see that with a fan at minimum speed, the results are more or less the same. At 25% speed, we can see that there's a great improvement of the quality of the surface and the angle on the top. At 50%, we can see that the edge is even more defined and the surface finish is really good. After that, we can see that the, the improvements are minimal. And the same for full speed. You can see that in the bottom of the part that the part started with no fan, so I could get a better adhesion to the to the raft, and then finish on the highest setting. <laughs> 